Welcome back to the Spectrum in Logan, Utah. The Runner Rebels with a three-point lead at the break. Or right, well, alongside the coach, Pete Gillen. And coach, the Aggies are a team that really share the basketball. And the first half demonstrated that. 14 made field goals coming off 12 assists. That's tremendous. That's coaching. That's Stu Moore, one of the things he talks about is teamwork, share the basketball, discipline, hard work. He's a great coach. So they really shared the ball and they're very efficient offensively. And both teams shot the ball well from beyond the arc. A tiny bit more of a surprise, the volume of three-point shots for UNLV is they made six in the first half. It's amazing, isn't it? Four guys from UNLV made threes, four guys from Utah State. So it was raining threes in the first half. And we see the sharing the basketball. Kendrick from way downtown. Kick it in, kick it out. Doolin had plenty of time. Reversing the basketball. McCaw, who was four for eight from three-point land last game. And Christian Wood, as you said before, 6'11, dialing up from way downtown. But hey, this is Utah State's game. Knocking in from downtown. 44% from three-point land. Perkins from way out and 19 points in the last game. Here go Chris Smith. Tremendous shooter. Perkins again, little jab step, way out. Top of the key, Jalen Moore from way downtown. So here we go. McClaston, lefty to port side with a three. Now let's take a look at tonight's first half stats brought to you by Five Hour Energy. The thing that jumps out at me is UNLV, seven second chance points to two. And once again, uh, Utah State with 12 assists on 14 minutes. We got a great game. Just a short difference between the two teams, only three points. It's gonna go right down to the wire. The difference right now is the rebounding by UNLV. We'll see if UNLV can stay hot from beyond the arc because they average just over seven made threes per game, but they've already got six. If they were able to keep that up, maybe a chance for what would be considered an upset because it's hard to win here. Exactly, very tough place to play. But a lot of times, you know, these struggles coming out of the break. Maybe they lose focus a little bit, so we'll see what happens. Well, Smith goes back door and gets the easy two. And another assist for the Aggies. If I'm UNLV, I'm going inside. Go inside out with the ball into Okonobo or Christian Wood because they're too talented, too athletic. The Aggies can't guard these guys inside. Patrick McCaw has gotten better and better. Last eight games, averaging close to 13 points. He's raising that scoring average. And considering they have no Rashad Vaughn, he's really filled some of that scoring void. He's a smart player. He's a coach's son. Dad is a high school coach in St. Louis, so we learned all the way up. So he's a mature freshman. And everyone thinks that Cody Doolin would be the assist leader, but in conference games, it's Patrick McCall who leads the team at just under four assists per game. Because he's more of a threat when he drives it to score the basketball, which sets up his teammate. Exactly. Cody's a good player, but he's more east and west. He's got to penetrate more, be more aggressive like he was in the first half. Wood misses that three, but they'll get an extra chance. You don't often see a play run for a 6'11 guy to shoot a three. Yeah, well, if I'm Utah State, let him have all the threes he wants. Because inside, he can be a, a terminator, a wrecking machine. He'll make a three, but I don't think he's going to beat you there consistently. Christian Wood, finger roll no, tries to go and get it. And here comes Perry, who had a quiet first half. Perry, true freshman, finds Smith. Chris Smith, deadly from beyond the arc. Third best to the Mount West. Once again, that's a weakness for UNLV is their fast break defense. Why? Because they're crashing the boards. Not enough guys are getting back. They're not stopping the basketball soon enough. A 5-0 run to start the half for the Aggies. And we've got a foul. They're going to stay on this end of the floor. But, Coach, you were right on point because you said it. You want to be sometimes at the beginning of the half can fall into a little bit of a lull and the Aggies have taken advantage. Exactly, yeah. Sometimes they are not focused early. McCaw drives in, might get bumped a little bit. I'm sure who I saw the foul on then, Ari. I'm with you, Coach. McCaw, the crossover. And he goes and gets it. Wow. Like some contact there. They've let him play tonight. They've been consistent. Jalen Moore's jumper is good. And 
Yeah, he's got the four arsenal, Coach. He's got the three, the mid-range game, and he's good with his back to the basket. Good timeout by Dave Rice. Utah State starts the half on fire. And they have retaken the lead. We're coming right back. First minute and 55 seconds of the half, Utah State on a 7-0 run. Coach, inside that run and rebel huddle, what's the message from Dave Rice? What Dave Rice is saying is, man, we got to take good shots. Good shot selection. Let's work inside out. Get the ball to the big guys. Get inside to Christian Wood. And good luck, Okonobo. All right? Get that. And we miss a shot. we got to get back. Because right now, Utah State's killing us in transition because we're not running back. So that's what he's saying. Take good shots, and then we miss it. Let's get back and stop the ball. Let's revisit your keys. Well, rebounding, UNLV. Key, they're up five. Defended three, six for 13. They're not doing a good job defending three. Utah State, balanced scoring. Yes, they're getting that. Ball security, only three turnovers. So right now, Utah State is doing the keys a little bit better than the runner Rebels. Little nugget from the first meeting that really caught me by surprise was that UNLV's win in overtime. They only committed four turnovers. That's amazing. Because in every other statistical category, when I looked at the box score, I thought, how did Utah State not win this game? But the runner Rebels took good care of the ball, but not on this trip. UNOV now with six turnovers. Yeah, that time they did a nice job double team in the low post. And Christian Wood got a little bit anxious and threw it away. Utah State has to double the post because they're not athletic or big enough to go out and one on one in there. Colette really good with his back to the basket. Nice. He is just a freshman, but keep in mind he went on a mission. So he's a very mature redshirt freshman. Exactly. You can't let him get the ball that deep. If you're open over, you know you're a great shot blocker. You can't let somebody get the ball that deep. McCall set himself up with the pump fake. Smith. Well, Jalen Moore just didn't have enough room to finish there. The lob and the finish, Okonobo. Rebels got to play some defense right now. They're just waving at the guys. Once again, their depth. When the seven scholarship plays, you get a little tired. So when you get tired, what is sacrifice? Usually defense. Kendrick got his hand in the passing lane, and you also brought up the point that I think is important to keep reminding everyone is the elevation. So you've got seven scholarship players, you're playing at more than 5,000 feet. They're gonna have to be really careful how they use their timeouts to keep the runner rebels fresh. Exactly. Good defense, Okanobo. Kendrick wide open. Spins out. Also by Okanobo ends up like heading up the stairs there. Come on back, good luck. Uh, it's a great job crashing the offensive glass. Very talented, his offense is coming. He's not there yet, but he's getting better and better. He is, which team's gonna dig down and play some defense? Stop and pop too strong. They're pushing now through the Rebels. Now we go inside out. Run UNLB, go inside. Let the big guys touch it. Kendrick, another good look. It's not his strength. You can make some, but that's not his strength. You go to your strength, which is Christian Wood, your best player. Let him touch the ball. Again, collect great position, basket and the foul. Take it through it, Coach. Get the ball inside to the big guy. Nice job. Colette seals his man. Nice pass inside. Finish all Aggies right now. An 11-2 run to start the half for the Aggies has given them a six-point lead. Here are tonight's Golden Corral teams hungry for a bid. 
Here we see four teams that got a chance to go to the big dance. We see Boise State in the Mountain West, 43 RPI. They got some work to do. Dayton, 38, terrific team in the A-10. Stanford, 52, certainly got work in St. John's. I think right now the best chance would be Dayton Flyers with 28-6 and 38 in the RPI, but all four got a chance. Right now Stanford's got the most work to do. Strength of schedule's okay, but 52 is uh, you know, not good enough right now, so. And coach, with the Mountain West having such parity this year, the only team that seems a lock is San Diego State. If you were the selection committee, it was up to you, how many bids would you give to the Mountain West this season? I would give them three. I think the league's been underrated. You know, they're saying it's not great. It's still a very good league. It's more balance, there's more parity, as you know, Ari. So I, I think Colorado State, they have a very good RPI. They're in the 20s. And Boise State's coming on strong. So it depends who wins the Mountain West tournament. So, uh, as you know, last year, last three years, New Mexico won it. So I think two for sure, three possible. And Boise State, amongst the teams, has a very favorable schedule down the stretch. Right. In their final week of the season, they're at San Jose State, and then they're home against Fresno State. So they got a good chance to go. Uh, last year, the Mountain West only got two teams in. So this year, I think two, possibly three, once again, depending on who wins. San Diego State for sure is in. I think Colorado State is right there. I think they got a great chance, and now maybe one more. You know, Boise or somebody might surprise and win the tournament. And it could be Utah State. Could be. Four I mean, it could row. be a tough out. I mean, they're hot right now. Four in a row, shooting the ball great. Just saying that Chuck Daly, the great coach of the Dream Team number two, shooting makes up for a multitude of sins. Little bump there with Colette with the body. Colette now with two personal fouls. Nobody in the game has three personals yet, so no foul trouble. Elston Jones gave them quality minutes off the bench in the first half. Jones had four points and three rebounds. Now, if I'm UNLV, I put a little pressure on him, a little zone press or something. I know you don't have seven numbers, but you got to do something. Right now, Utah State's in a great rhythm. You've got to attack them, trap them, do something to try to mix it up, get some points off your defense. Right now, they're carving them up. Elston Jones moves back to his left, and there's a foul before the shot on Christian Wood, and he cannot believe it. It's his second. Was inside two deep position. That was, that was, I say play on. Darius Perkins with the basketball. He has turned into quite an offensive weapon. Comes off the screen. Good defense from Doolin. Rod Perkins, tremendous shooter. McGlaston's very good at creating off the dribble and setting up his teammates. Perkins, the triple. Another assist for McGlaston and the three for Perkins. Got to play him. Perkins is a great three-point shooter. He's been on fire the last three weeks. Big hoop for the Aggies. Perkins with 11 points. He's three of five from beyond the arc. Jordan Cornish, strong take. Nice move by Cornish. On his zone now. Rebels are playing zone. So right now they're not defending well in a man-to-man, -man, and they got to get a little rest. They got to protect inside. Moore gets to Jones. And the deflection for McCaw made it impossible for McGlaston to make the catch. So again, there's been so many deflections from UNLV. Long hands, they're long, they're athletic, they anticipate. Credit Dave Rice, good job changing defense, they got a turnover. You can't stay in one defense too long against Utah State because they're so good acting offensively in the half court. They execute so well, and that's, once again, credit to Stu Marlow. Utah State, zero fast break points. UNLV, six. If this game comes down to half-court execution, it's advantage Utah State. No question. It's always been Stu Morrow's things. He's done a great job with that. Harry misses the three, but a foul. Jordan Cornish picks up the personal. That's two on Cornish. 
Cornish from New Orleans. Looking for Jalen Moore now. Looking for him. Perkins blocked by Wood. Here come the running Rebels. And Christian Wood cleans it up. They're going to say offensive goaltending. I'm sure our crew will give us another look at it. It's close. Nice steal by Kendrick. Goes down, takes the pass. Good call. Ball was still in the cylinder. The cylinder goes all the way up to the ceiling. He touched it. Three zone here by the Rebels. The weakness is the high post. If you get in the high post now, you can kick it low, low you or kick it to either side. Get it to the high post, Jalen Moore. McGlaston gets it to Jones, blocked by Wood. Another block for Christian Wood. McCaw, he can fly. He misses, but boy, when he turns on the Jets. Yeah. Two wasted opportunities for the Red Rebels. That hurts. And on the road down five, Ari, it's tough to do. Eight turnovers for UNLV, just four for the Aggies. McGlaston misses the three. Jalen Moore, right place, right time. With the left hand and a chance for three. Well, that was a quick reaction, boy. The ball was on the ground, he had it, he was up before you knew it. Missed shot. Cornish couldn't finish it. Went right to Jalen Moore. He spun around, used his left hand. Protected it, he brought the body first, and nice finish by Jalen Moore, the talented sophomore. Having grown up here his entire life, he really has an understanding of what they want to do here at Utah State. And he is a perfect example of the kind of player they want, a guy who's unselfish and can be versatile and do lots of different things on the floor. Exactly. Dad was a great player here, as we mentioned. He's in the Hall of Fame at Utah State. He's a talented basketball player, now works in the administration, and He's the leader, he's only a sophomore, but he leads the team on and off the court. UNLV, another turnover. The lead is currently eight. Now the runner Rebels are perfectly capable of going on a run, as if their defense can lead to quick points. But they play, it's gonna get a little tricky to get down too deep at this place where the Aggies play with so much confidence. Tough to beat at home. Stu Morrow's won 89% of his home games this is coach here at Utah State. Great coach, terrific teacher. Works with the players on the court, off the court. Chris Smith, the three, swish. And he's got the stroke back. He struggled the other night, but yep. tonight, looking good from the outside. Nice job, got the ball to the high post and kicked it out. He now has 14 points. They already have four players in double figures, coach. Yep. You ought to be needed that. Four players the last game, and they beat Fresno, as you know, the other night. And in their winning streak, more often than not, they've had a bunch of guys in double figures, four guys. We've given so much of the credit to Stu Morrill, and he wants none of the credit. On Saturday night, when he won his 400th game as head coach for Utah State, he refused to have a ceremony after the game. He amazing. said, no, thank you. Walked right to the locker room. It's one of the reasons for his success. Again, he's a hidden jewel in the mountains of Utah, and he wants it that way. He's not a guy, a big ego guy. He's not a, putting the cologne on and the moose in the hair. Like, you got cologne and moose on, but you're a good looking guy. But I don't do that. But I don't know about the cologne or the <laughs> moose, but. Really? It's still good looking yeah. out. Well, people yeah. say, you sign out of grab, you're kissing babies, you sign out of grab, halftime. Cody doing the steal. Kendricks gets by the freshman and gets the easy two, and nice little run here for UNLV. As you said before, they're very explosive. Credit Dave Rice now to keep competing. Had a lot of tough losses, a lot of injuries, but it keeps swinging. But they also have had some great wins. You think about that they beat Arizona this year. Right. So this team went healthy. They're so young, you're not sure what you're going to get every night if you're Dave Rice. But you hope that you're going to have them Maybe three years, maybe four years, best case scenario, this group of freshmen that 
that they learn to play in different situations, and he's been forced to do that with this year's team. No, he's done a nice job. It's not easy to keep it together. You go to New Mexico, and you win down there the last game, and you know, New Mexico's had a struggle, lost a few in a row, but it's still a tough place to play. And as you mentioned before, they're very young, very inexperienced. He's lost all five starters. Be sure to catch the new movie, Focus, from Warner Brothers Pictures in theaters this Friday. There's Will Smith. Last week when he was promoting it, he was on David Letterman. I don't know that David Letterman likes any guest more than Will Smith. They sure had a good time. You're right. A lot of fun. Four-point game. Stay in the zone now, which is good. You get it to the high post. If you're Utah State, get it to the high post. You get it there, you can dump it low or dump it opposite for a shot. That's why you want to get it to the high post. That foul line area against the 2-3 zone. That's the weakness. That foul line area with Colette's there, number 13. McGlaston pulls up. A little too strong and dueling the rebound. Not the shot you want. Glass is a good player, but shooting is not his strength. McCaw can shoot it. And this time an air ball. He had been hot. McGlaston. No, Jalen Moore's put back no good. Runner Rebels have numbers. Kendrick keeps shooting the three, and he's yeah. just not finding it tonight. No, it's not his strength. Oh, he oh, went. Wow. Got to call that. That's a foul. And now we're getting into an up and down game. Okanobo, soft touch, gets the two. But it got dangerous there for a moment. Dave Rice got the timeout, and his team has reacted well. Okanobo now with 10 points. Nice job. And Colette, basket, and the foul. It's a tough angle. It's a tough angle. We see on Sunday, they're going to have a memorial for Jerry Tarkanian. Memorial service Sunday at 2 o'clock. Thomas and Max Center. Open to the public. And, you know, people are free. Of course, anything. We will take a break, but that event will be bittersweet, both a celebration of the outstanding career of Jerry Tarkanian. For the Aggies, let's take a listen in to Coach Dave Rice. Got it. So we're going to curl two up in the post, Chris. Understand? Yeah. Game two. Push. Hey. Push. You got to fight on. In case they press, three guards up, get the ball, and then if they're in zone, we're in stage AK. We're in stage AK. Hey, real quick, if we run strong, the first, because he's just playing straight behind Chris. The first swing they catch, make a look at that post, we run strong. Now this next time down, we run it. Dave Rice had so much success as an assistant coach at BYU. He was there during the heyday of Jimmer Fredette when they had some outstanding teams. Having a chance as the head coach in UNLV made a long-term commitment to him this offseason with South Florida came after him. They gave him five years and they said, you can go ahead and build this with guys out of high school. You don't have to take transfers or junior college guys. We want you here for the long term. Exactly. What he was saying in the huddle is, let's try to go inside and try to curl around the big guys. Try to get inside, pound it in if we can. If they're in a the zone, we got three in the outside. Look for the shot or look inside. See how tough they are when they run. And a steal or a missed shot. Ari, right, that's where they're at their strength now. Kendrick's a good player, but go inside. We don't need his jump shot unless he's wide open. That's it. Inside. Now get rid of it when they double. Wood forces it up. Can't get it to go. Nice bounce pass. atmosphere here coach and a night where we've talked about assists that's the best one of the night exactly run and we see now 
Here we see we go right here, and he's going to run like crazy. Push it ahead. All right. All right, freeze it there, freeze it. Right now we see Colette beating everybody down the court. He runs rim to rim. Nice bounce pass. We got to finish. Great break by the Aggies. Bounce pass, rim to rim. Nice finish. So, Coach, the percentage of made field goals off assists continues to grow. 24 made field goals, 21 assists. It's amazing. When I coached Ari, some of my players thought assist was a lump on your back that the doctors <laughs> cut out when you went for a visit. So, but these guys know what an assist is. They so bought in. Yep. And they all know they're going to get touches. Exactly. Now, what a great job. It's a shame for the coaching profession that Stu Morrow's moving on. But he's had a wonderful career, 40 years in coaching, 29 as a head coach, so time to relax, spend a little more time with his family. And what's also very nice, to go out on your own terms. Exactly. I'm on Boot Hill. I want to hang around for another hour or so. They planned to be, but I'm great to be here with you. I'm yeah, thrilled. this is fun. A little less pressure on you. Oh, yeah. to sit here and talk some hopes. Yeah, I'm hitching twitch. I'm coaching much better as an analyst, you know. Got a feeling you're sleeping better. Exactly. Christian Wood, a little bit off balance on that three, real early in the shot clock. Once again, he's doing Utah State a favor by shooting. He can make some, but he's not going to beat him with threes, I don't think. He can beat him inside. When he double him, he's got to kick it out. Get the ball to the high post to the redhead, Sean Harris. <clears throat> Perkins has been deadly. Four made threes tonight. He's just really feeling it. Playing great. Nice job, nice face up by Dwayne Morgan. He's giving them a lift off the bench. What a nice job. You know, it goes back to man-to-man. -man. Utah State was in a great rhythm against his own, really sharing the basketball. Smith rises. Shot doesn't go, but got hit on the shot. We will take a break when we come back. Chris Smith to the free throw line. Utah State with a seven-point lead, and Darius Perkins, 14 points. The Utah State lead is 62 to 55. Let's take a look at tonight's Geico difference makers. Yep. Here we see Jalen Moore, number 14, has got 10 points, one for two from three, three round, rebounds and a block. He's doing a great job for the Aggies. And for UNLV, Christian Wood, 11 points, four for 11 for the field, eight rebounds, two blocks. And coach, tonight we've been celebrating the coaching that we've seen from Stu Morrill over his career. And tonight is one of the great examples. 25 made field goals and they've tied a season high 22 assists. That's unbelievable. Sharing a basketball, that's unselfishness, that's coaching, that's teaching, teamwork. That's what Stu Morrill is all about. And it has been effective as they may head into the Mountain West Conference Tournament as the hottest team in the Mountain West. They have won four straight. So they do have some tough games coming up on the road at Air Force and at Wyoming. Yep. Those are going to be tough. Anytime you go on the road in the Mountain West, as you know, it's very difficult. Since Utah State has been a fairly recent addition to the Mountain West, sometimes they don't get included with the hot spots like San Diego State, right. the Pitt, New Mexico. But I think the longer they're in the Mountain West, the more people will talk about how hard it is to win here. Very tough to win here. It's elevation, as you mentioned before, 5,400 feet. The crowd is tremendous, the student crowd, the adults are wonderful, a great coach. And I think next year, whoever takes over, if Stu Morrow retires, he's going to have a, a really a nice team to work with. I've tried to get information about who, what guys are maybe on a short list, but so far I haven't gotten anybody to bite and give any inside info at this time of year. Close to the best, for sure. So I think it's a nice opportunity. It's you short. have to really understand Logan. It, it's, it's a unique place, and it, it's not for every student athlete. Everybody doesn't want to come here, but if you find the right group, he's shown that you can win a lot of games. It's a beautiful town. I mean, Logan's a beautiful city, and... Uh, they love basketball with a great tradition of winning excellent academically so i mean the state loves its basketball when you think about utah 
Utah State, BYU. Right, no question. Three programs that win a lot of games. Weber State's had yeah. a very successful run. But as you take a look inside the spectrum, as usual, almost to capacity in the herd. They always had the road team facing the student section in the second half. Good move. Cody Doolin, smallest guy on the floor, gets the rebound. That should not happen. Six foot guard should not steal the ball you know, on that rebound. That should not happen. Let's see if McCaw steps up here. Somebody needs to do something for UNLV. Christian Wood, blocked by Harris. Harry's pass is deflected. And Jalen Moore immediately said to him, throw the alley up, throw it up. Let me go get it. There's Sean Harris, he's a senior. Nice job, came from behind. Good block by Sean Harris. Only senior on the team. Six year senior. After Utah State, you take your time, you make UNLV play defense. You get the ball now to Jalen Moore, your best player. I think he can drive on Christian Wood, who's tied. Get it to Jalen Moore. Jalen looks inside to Harris. Harris goes and gets it. He's a hustle kind of player. And his minutes have increased in the conference part of the schedule. That time he willed it in. He did. Okanobo is much bigger, more athletic, more talented, but Sean Harris wanted that possession a little bit more. Okanobo, and he is fouled hard. It's a clean foul. It's not the size of the dog in a fight. The size of fighting the dog. This guy's really, this Aggie's really competing. The shot block goes out again, taps it. And I mean, just outworked Okanobo. And Coach Morrill talked about it. he really is such a great role model for the other players about how he does everything. From class to practice to games. Yep. So even though he's a guy, most of the time a guy needs to have a big role to be a leader. Right. Sean Harris doesn't have to have a big role and is still a leader. No. Nope. The players respect him because how hard he works and his attitude. Come off the court and inside the studio as our crew breaks down the night that was around a college basketball. Inside college basketball tonight at 11.30 Eastern, only on CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Well, it's a fun time of year. It's like every day we get closer to March, the games get more meaningful. And lots for the guys to dissect. Right now, Utah State, take your time, run your offense. It's one of the strengths of Stu Morrow is running the offense. Soft touch there from Smith, and he has really come on in the second half. Nice drive, yep. Very talented. The lead is 13, the largest of the game. And that time, Doolin tried to force it in. And Dave Rice wants and gets a timeout. He needed one. Chris Smith, he makes believe he's going to use the ball screen, but he just drives by his man here. Smith with a game-high 18 points. Maybe he's going to use the screen, attack the basket. McCaw just, Okanobo just let him go by, break the foul. Okanobo just had hands up. Kind of waved at him. It was Matador at that time. Matador defense. And Smith has been a model of efficiency. Six of ten from the field, three of four from beyond the arc, three of three at the foul line, five rebounds and five assists. Terrific player. One of the best three-point shooters in the Mountain West. He's junior college transfer. It's his first year at Utah State. He's a junior, and uh, well, he's done a terrific job for the Aggies. Matt Wells, an interested observer, 2-0 in bowl games. When Gary Anderson left for Wisconsin, they just kept it going. Football program has won four straight bowl games. That's very impressive. He said, they're great fans here. They really love their school and their tremendous enthusiasm. Very creative. Fans with all the cheers. And, the and they do their homework. I mean, if you're here during the early part of the warm-ups, when they're, they've picked out stuff that they found out about the players, and then they heckle them with that. It's not just generic. They do their, they do the homework, they do the study, and then have fun. Uh, they do have a lot of fun. Very creative. And as the 
second to last home game for retirement coach tomorrow. We want to end it right. March 7th will be an emotional night here at the Spectrum. Final home game for Stu Morrow. Yep. He's going against Colorado State, where he used to coach. Isn't Larry that fitting? Larry Eustacey, as you know, used to coach here. So it's a very interesting situation. Both guys have won every place they've stepped. Yep. Both are great coaches. A lot of terrific coaches in the Mountain West, for sure. Steve Fisher. Another guy that does an unbelievable job. <clears throat> well, now I feel like the country is aware of what Steve Fisher has been doing at San Diego State for quite some time. But for many years, it felt sort of like Stu Morrill, that nobody in the Midwest or the East Coast yep. realized what was happening. Well, you're right. Now San Diego State, they, you, know, you just assume they're going to go to the tournament. Good defense from the Aggies. San Diego State's going five years in a row, and this is going to be number six. John Harris, unselfish. Another assist and another three for Darius Perkins. Wow. Great job, John Harris knew with two guys around him, kicked it out. Three. That is a deep three. 16 point lead now for Utah State. It's tough to come back, the way these guys execute. A 16-2 run over the last four and a half minutes. And you can combine several factors. Yes, Utah State's playing well. But you know what I mean? Just the seven scholarship players available, playing at the high altitude. A lot of things going against the Runner Rebels tonight. And Christian Wood gets the technical foul, and Jalen Moore to the free throw line. Yep. Christian Wood got frustrated, he got fouled a couple of times, didn't think it was called, and got upset. Can't say anything to the officials. Yep, I think he's talking to the official, Tony Padilla, saying something. Tony made the, the call. One for two for Jalen Moore. Moore's got 11 points, three rebounds, and three assists. Their box score at the end of this game would make any coach proud. Yeah. Tell you what, I don't think anybody wants to play Utah State in the Mountain West Tournament in Las Vegas coming up in a couple of weeks. Very dangerous, Ari. Patrick McCaw, and that is blocked, but a foul. Good call. Colette tried to block it, hit him back of the back of the neck of the head. I've seen the Aggies many times this season, Coach. One thing I've already noticed about Colette, he reminds me a little bit in the way he reacts to calls of Kevin McHale. He always has a look of, how could it be me? I didn't commit the foul. Yeah, like he's well, Kevin McHale over. certainly had a uh, really successful career and a, now a very successful coach. Yeah. Well, that's an emotional guy. He yeah. starts well, he plays great early. If he struggles early, then usually he fights himself a little bit. I think he's a very good player. Redshirt freshman, got a nice future. As you mentioned before, he's on a mission for a couple of years, so he's an older freshman, but he's got a bright future. 1-2-1-1 one, one, one zone press here by UNLV, trying to get back in the game, get some turnovers. Collette is trapped. Well, that's textbook right there. Great way to attack his own. McCaw, the response. <laughs> With that last basket from the Aggies, they are now 6 of 12 from the three-point line. And the assists just keep coming. 24 assists on 29 made field goals. Unbelievable. That's a record for this season. Yep. Season high. Perkins tried to give it off. We'll take a break. 3.17 to go in this one. The Aggies looking to keep their win streak alive. 
And Perkins finds more. Perfect stroke. CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by Golden Corral. Bring in your family to Golden Corral and take home six free piping hot and delicious yeast rolls. Only at Golden Corral. By Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by the all-new LG G3. Best winning percentage this century thus far. And look at that company and look at the Aggies. Yep. Which team would you not think? A lot of people would say, all right, yeah, Gonzaga, Memphis, Duke, Kansas, Connecticut. But Utah State, a lot of people wouldn't. But that's a credit to Coach Tomorrow and his fans and his support from the administration and his players. So a great winning tradition here in Logan, Utah, Utah State Aggies. I think you can ask educated fans, people who consider themselves insiders, and they wouldn't understand how many games this gentleman's won as the head coach. Exactly. Exactly. He's a great coach. His mentor is Mike Montgomery. Great coach at Stanford. And, uh, finished up at U California. Yep. They both coach at Montana at one time. And, uh, but he's a very modest guy and uh, very humble, as you said before, Ari, and happy for his success. Another two off the bench. Dwayne Morgan has made the most of his minutes. He's five for five from the field. Jalen Moore, blows by Okanoba. Yeah. They're playing with such confidence now and poise. This young team has grown up. They struggled early in the season. But now they're playing with tremendous confidence and poise. And they're loose. They're relaxed. They know the coach is retiring, so I can relax. And they're focused. The assistants are not going out recruiting. They're helping them prepare for the games. 15-point lead, less than two and a half minutes remain. Utah State for the game, just under 54% from the field. And even better than that from beyond the arc, 11 for 20. Once again, UNLV's playing one out there. Fabulous freshman. Rashad Bourne is a leading scorer. And it went for 31 in their win against Utah right. State. Good so, point. You know, that's, that's a, a tough, anybody loses a great player like that, it's got to hurt. They won their last game at New Mexico, but now they're one and three without their fabulous freshman. Colette to the free throw line. Colette putting together another terrific night. He hits the free throw. He is perfect seven for seven from the field and has 15 points in the game. Doing a great job. Once again, the Jerry Tarkane Memorial Service this weekend, Sunday at 2 o'clock, Thomas and Mack Center. In Las Vegas, open to the public. Hopefully, everybody will come. They have some time and uh, pay their tribute to the great Jerry Tarkany. So beloved by so many people. I'm not sure that Thomas and Mac is big enough to hold all the people who want to celebrate the life of Coach. Morgan misses with the left hand, but he'll head to the free throw line. And these teams were great rivals when Jerry Tarkanian was coaching in the Big West. They banged heads. Con Smith was here, Ron Tuller was here. So it was a big rivalry, and uh, now they're reinventing it again. Morgan 71% on the season. Too strong on the first one. The road to the Final Four continues on CBS Sports Network tomorrow night as UCF takes on the Cincinnati Bearcats at 7.30 Eastern, followed by a Mountain West showdown as Fresno State squares off against junior guard Josh Adams and the Wyoming Cowboys at 9.30, all right here on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Well, we told you Utah State, one of the best in America at taking care of the basketball. And tonight, just nine turnovers. They averaged 10 and a half. So even with the skilled defenders and athleticism from UNLV, they've been with able to take that defense and take good care of the ball. Once again, five new starters for the Aggies. Chris Smith, 20 points. He'll be in the conversation for newcomer of the year in the Mountain West. You won't get it. Rashad Vaughn and there's some other 
great players, but he certainly uh, done a heck of a job for the Yankees. A lot of people thought it would be Angelo Troll, the transfer from Arizona to San Diego State. Well, you'd have to say that Chris Smith has had a bigger impact this season. And I got to think that Jalen Moore is a lock for the first team on Mountain West. Especially if they finish in the top four. Some fabulous players in the Mountain West, but Jalen Moore's got my vote because he does so many things you said before. Some things they don't show up in a box score. A classy move here from Coach Morrow as he brings his starters out of the game together and lets the fans here at the Spectrum show their love of the Aggies. Now, if I'm Colorado State coming in here for Stu's last game, right, and they need that game, they get a great chance to go to the big dance, but they're not in yet. I wouldn't be too excited about coming into Logan for Stu's last game. It's going to be a tough one. These players, make no mistake about it, they're focused. They want to win for Stu. They want to win for themselves, but they want to win for Stu Morrow. Travel in the backcourt, Sam Orchard. Would it be interesting, depending on how Colorado State does the next couple games before that game, which team will feel more pressure? Because if you remember the Aggies, you, you've got to feel some pressure that you want to send your coach out a winner. Yeah, but I, I think they're already winners. You know, they're, they're going to postseason right now. The pick 10, as you mentioned before, preseason in the Mountain West. They, you know, far, you know, past that. So I don't think they're, right now, they're loose. The coach is going. We'll send them out a winner. A little pressure. Don't worry about the new coach when he comes in. Then it'll be a little pressure. Press him. Well, you also want to play well down the stretch because you're auditioning for whoever is going to be the new head coach. Exactly. So I, I think, you know, there's always pressure when you put on a uniform, step across the lines, and 10,000 people are there, and you're on national television. <laughs> but uh, I, I think they're playing loose and they're focused right now, Ari. Free throw is good. Another free throw coming up. Trace Curitan. Here's the remaining schedule. These next two very tough. Winning at Clune at Air Force is no picnic. At Wyoming, another one of those places that's very hard to win. And then very good Colorado State team. So they will end with three tough games. Every game is important. Right now, 17 to 10. That's pretty good for a team that's picked 10th in the Mountain West by the media in the preseason. And at one time, Coach, they were just 9 and 7. Things were not looking so bright. Cornish knocks down the jumper. And UNLV. Look what they called the timeout. Not sure what exactly was the stoppage. And this is one of their favorite chants here. They point at UNLV and say, losers. They point at their guys and say, winners. One of many traditions for the fans here in Logan. Very creative. They yeah. have fun, they're wild, they're enthusiastic. Great fans, one of the best student sections, I think, in the country. Sixteen seconds left in the game. Fry gives to Orchard, and UNLV appears they will not foul. And victory 401 for Stu Morrow as the head coach at Utah State. That will make him even happier. Five straight wins. The final score, 83 to 65. And Dave Rice there showing his respect for Coach Morrow. Jalen Moore and company, they had a lot of guys delivered tonight. Four guys in double figures, led by Chris Smith with 20 points. Fifth straight win for Utah State. Really unselfish, they put on a clinic offensively. We will take a quick break and we will come back with our final thoughts. Aggies get the win. A lot of big smiles in Logan, Utah tonight as the Aggies in the second half. Just 
Walk away from the Runner Rebels. Coach, as we look at the standings, we see Utah State now tied with Colorado State at 10 and 5. What will you take away from tonight's game? Well, I was really impressed by the offense of Utah State. They shared the basketball, 24 assists and 31 field goals. Unbelievable. 55% from three-point land, 11 for 20. Did an unbelievable job, so I thought they're really efficient offensively, Ari. I was impressed by their unselfishness and their execution at the half court. A great night for the Aggies as they remain hot. Five straight wins, and they came out. The fans were excited. A fun night to be in Logan. On behalf of Pete Gill and our entire crew, I'm Ari Wolf. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Now let's send it to New York, to Brent Stover and the gang for Inside College Basketball. Have a great night, everybody.